welcome. Remember how you can use row reduction to simplify a system of linear equations to a simpler form, the echelon form? In this video, we will explore what the echelon form tells us about the solutions. For a simple example, we start by looking at a set of homogeneous equations. Those are equations in which the right hand side is zero for all linear equations in a system. You can see an example on the slide. Notice that the homogeneous equation has a solution x1 equals 0, x2 equals 0, etc. Or in terms of a matrix equation, this solution is x equals the zero vector. As you always have this solution, it is called the trivial solution. So the set of solutions of a homogeneous equation will always contain the trivial solution. Geometrically, this means it contains the origin. One of the questions you can wonder about is whether there are more solutions than just this one. Those other solutions are called the non-trivial solutions. To solve this set of homogeneous equations, we follow the process you learned earlier. First, write it in an augmented matrix form and then use row reduction to obtain an echelon form. Notice that the right-hand column in the augmented matrix is full of zeros at first, because those are the right-hand sides of the equations in the system. The three possible steps used in row reducing the matrix keep zeros in the last column. For example, if we interchange two rows, we just interchange two zeros in the last column, which does not change anything in this column. In particular, we see that the echelon form for the augmented matrix of a homogeneous system cannot get a row of all zeros apart from the rightmost entry. In this way, we see that our system must be consistent. Well, we already knew this, because we had already seen that it had the trivial solution. If every column in the left part of the augmented matrix contains a pivot, there is a unique solution. This unique solution must be the trivial solution, the zero vector. Finally, each column that has no pivot, as the third column in this example, corresponds to a free variable. Hence, in this case, there are infinitely many solutions. To obtain the general expression for the solution, we set the free variable x3 equal to a parameter t and plug that in the other equations. As you can see, in this case, the solutions are multiples of a single vector and thus form a line through the origin. In the examples, you can see what some of the solution sets look like. If there are no free variables, the only solution is the trivial solution, which is the origin. If there is one free variable, the solution set is a line through the origin, just as in the previous example. If there are two free variables, the solution set consists of all linear combinations of two vectors, which forms a plane through the origin. Let us now consider an inhomogeneous system of equations and compare it to the associated homogeneous system in which we have set all the right hand sides equal to zero. We see that the reduction to a reduced echelon form works in precisely the same way. The right hand column has to be modified in all the reduction steps, but never determines which kind of step is used. Let us now look at the associated set of equations to the reduced echelon form. We see that the solutions of the inhomogeneous equations are similar to the solutions of the homogeneous equations. The only difference is that you have to add a constant vector to the solutions of the homogeneous equations. Geometrically, this means that the solution set of the inhomogeneous system is a translate of the homogeneous system. As you see in the picture, the green solution of the inhomogeneous system is still a line in the same direction as the blue solution to the homogeneous equation. However, it is shifted by a vector to the orange point and thus does not run through the origin anymore. 
This orange vector is the solution of the inhomogeneous system of equations, take t equals zero, and is called a particular solution. Just like for linear differential equations in calculus, the general solution to an inhomogeneous equation can be expressed as the sum of a single particular solution and the general solution of the homogeneous equation. Beware that an inhomogeneous system can be inconsistent. Thus we can conclude that the solution set of an inhomogeneous system is either empty or that it is a translate of the solution set of the corresponding homogeneous system. The number of free variables in an echelon form then determine what the solution set looks like. If there are no free variables, the solution set is a single point. If there is one free variable, it is a line. If there are two free variables, it is a plane, etc. If the solution set of the inhomogeneous equation is not empty, then you can write all the solutions as the sum of a particular solution P and the solutions to the corresponding homogeneous equation, just as you could for linear differential equations. See you in class.